15 times the British royal family united the nation. The British royal family's appeal is at an all-time low among some of the younger Brits in particular. However, in its long history, the royal family has time and again brought the nation together and united them. From Queen Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953, to King Charles III and Princess Diana's wedding in 1981, to the birth of Prince George to the late Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022. Today, we take a look at 15 instances when the British royal family united the nation. Number 1. Queen Elizabeth II's Coronation, 1953 In February 1952, Queen Elizabeth II received the news of King George VI's death and her accession to the throne while on an official tour of Kenya. On the eve of her coronation, the Queen made a radio broadcast to the Commonwealth where she pledged her devotion to the masses. Throughout all my life and with all my heart, I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. Besides, this was the first time a British royal coronation ceremony was getting televised following the Queen's request. An estimated 27 million British people watched the ceremony live on television. At the same time, another 11 million listened to the proceedings on the radio. Thus, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II served as a significant moment of unity for Britain as millions tuned in to watch the historic event on television while others celebrated in streets and homes throughout the country. Number 2. Silver Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, 1977 The Silver Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II's accession was celebrated with widespread parades and public gatherings throughout the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth throughout 1977. On June 6, the Queen lit a bonfire beacon at Windsor Castle, the light of which spread across the night throughout the whole country as the general public lit their beacons to celebrate the occasion. On June 7, crowds filled the procession route to St. Paul's Cathedral, where the royal family attended a national Thanksgiving service alongside many world leaders. The procession continued down the mall to Buckingham Palace, where more than one million people crowded the pavements to see the family wave to onlookers, while a further 500 million people around the Commonwealth watched the day's events on live television. Number 3. Wedding of King Charles and Lady Diana, 1981 Widely dubbed as the wedding of the 20th century, the wedding of King Charles and Princess Diana took place on Wednesday, July 29, 1981 at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. The ceremony was a traditional Church of England wedding with notable members in attendance, including members from other royal families, state heads, both the bride and groom's families, and other close connections. After the ceremony, the couple made the trip back to Buckingham Palace for the traditional appearance on the balcony. Moreover, the UK government announced a national holiday on that day to celebrate the royal wedding. It is believed that the wedding was watched by a global audience of more than 750 million, while events were held throughout the Commonwealth to celebrate the occasion. Number 4. Queen Mother's 100th Birthday, 2000 on August 4, 2002, the British royal family's Queen Mother celebrated her centenary. Thousands of people gathered outside the Queen Mother's residence, Clarence House, while thousands more gathered the Mall and Buckingham Palace to catch a glimpse of the British royal family's first centenary. Among events, the Queen Mother took a carriage ride down the Mall, followed by a 41-gun salute with the marching band playing birthday tunes. The day's events concluded with a banquet at Windsor Castle. It brought an end to several weeks of centenary celebrations. Moreover, despite other royals falling out of favor with the general masses, Queen Mother always maintained a healthy relationship with the people. Most Brits and its Commonwealth nations still admire her bravery and leadership during World War II. Number 5. Golden Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, 2002 the Golden Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II in 2002 was both a commemoration of the Queen's 50th year reign and an opportunity for the late Queen to thank her people for their unwavering loyalty and support. It was decided that the occasion will be celebrated with a series of events from the 1st to 4th of June 2002. 
The celebration started with a classical concert including various international celebrities in Buckingham Palace, which was watched by 12,000 onlookers who were chosen through the ballot. There were parties and processions throughout London and other cities in the country. People also took part in lighting beacons and bonfires. The final day of celebrations started with a state procession from Buckingham Palace to St. Paul's Cathedral for a Thanksgiving service. Following lunch at the Guildhall hosted by the city, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh returned to House Guards where they watched a national festival of processions down the mall. Number 6. Wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, 2011 After an eight-year-long relationship, Prince William and Catherine Middleton tied the knot on April 29, 2011 at Westminster Abbey, London. The wedding ceremony was attended by both the bride and groom's families, as well as foreign royal families, diplomats, and other close connections. Moreover, as Prince William was not the next in line to the throne at the time, many of the finer details of the wedding were left to the couple to decide. The ceremony was watched by billions of people worldwide, as thousands of people took to the streets in the United Kingdom to celebrate the royal occasion. Like King Charles and Princess Diana's wedding, the event was a public holiday in the UK and involved many ceremonial aspects like state marriages, foot guards, and household cavalry. Number 7. Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, 2012 2012 saw the British monarchy celebrate Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee. It was the only Diamond Jubilee celebration since 1897, when celebrations were made for the 60th anniversary of Queen Victoria's accession. Similar to the theme of her silver and golden jubilee celebrations, events and processions were staged throughout the Commonwealth of Nations. However, the events had to be scaled back due to some of the economic policies of the governing Conservative Party at the time. Besides, the Diamond Jubilee celebrations also marked the beginning of the withdrawal of the Duke of Edinburgh from public life, with the Prince of Wales and Prince Harry taking more prominent roles in Commonwealth affairs. Thus, numerous events and tributes were held across the UK and the Commonwealth throughout the year as millions of people joined in to celebrate this once-in-a-lifetime event. Number 8. London Olympics 2012 Although not exclusively a royal event, the royal family played a significant role in the Games, and their presence helped unite the nation in supporting Team GB and in showcasing the UK to the world. Then 86-year-old, the late queen kicked things off with a video of her opening ceremony and mimicking jumping off a helicopter alongside Bond actor Daniel Craig. Prince Harry visited Canada House to show support for the men's and women's rowing teams. More than 100 athletes and family members were reportedly on hand for Prince Harry's visit. Elsewhere, both Prince William and Prince Harry visited the British Olympic team's official residence to wish members luck, while both brothers, alongside Princess Catherine, Camellia, wife of King Charles, and Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, watched the late Queen's granddaughter Zara Philip taking home a silver medal as part of Britain's equestrian team. Number 9. Birth of Prince George 2013 The birth of Prince George was a highly anticipated event with press officials camping outside the hospital in advance to get the first glimpse of the royal baby. Although, as tradition would have it, the official announcement came via a statement posted on a gilded easel outside Buckingham Palace. Prince William and Princess Catherine appeared outside St. Mary's Hospital to introduce the baby to the world. However, it was two days later that the royal family announced the baby's full name, His Royal Highness Prince George Alexander Lewis of Cambridge. Thousands of people lined the streets to celebrate the continuation of the royal lineage. Moreover, Prince George's birth marked the first time in more than a hundred years that three generations of direct heirs were alive simultaneously. Number 10. 70th Anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, 2015 In May 2015, the royal family, led by the late Queen, commemorated the end of World War II in Europe at the service of Thanksgiving at Westminster Abbey. Alongside her were the Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince of Wales, and the Duchess of Cornwall. Other members of the royal family, the Prime Minister, and nearly 1,000 war veterans and their families. Across the three days, picnics and events were held as various communities and schools across the UK came together to celebrate the end of the war 70 years ago. Number 11. 90th Birthday of Queen Elizabeth II, 2016 
To mark the 90th birthday of Queen Elizabeth II, several formal events and celebrations were held in June 2016. On June 10, the late Queen attended a national service of thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral in London with the Duke of Edinburgh. On the 11th, the late Queen's official birthday, the annual Trooping the Colour was held on Horse Guards Parade. While on June 12, the Queen hosted a street party for nearly 10,000 people at the patrons' lunch, serving as a moment of national unity and admiration for her long service to the nation. Number 12. Wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle 2018 The royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in 2018 was unforgettable for so many reasons, but most important of all was that it brought attention to important topics such as racial equality and inclusivity. On a sultry yet beautiful Sunday, the Duke of Sussex exchanged vows with his Duchess in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Royal family members, celebrities, diplomats, and other influential people attended. In addition to this, hundreds of millions watched the ceremony live on television. Number 13. Centenary of the End of World War I 2018 The late Queen Elizabeth II and other senior members of the British royal family led the nation and the Commonwealth's commemoration to mark 100 years since the end of World War I in 2018 highlighting a sense of unity and shared history. In November 2018, the late Queen, along with her son then, Prince Charles, and her grandchildren, William and Harry with their wives, attended an event at the Royal Albert Hall in London to pay tribute to the heroes of the war. The family watched artists and military bands pay their tributes to war veterans and martyrs. Number 14. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee 2022 the first ever Platinum Jubilee in British history, marking Queen Elizabeth II's 70 years on the throne, was a source of immense pride and unity for the country. To celebrate the historic occasion, events and initiatives were staged across the UK, with the government announcing a four-day bank holiday weekend from 2 to the 5th of June. However, it was not just limited to the UK. Celebrations and initiatives were announced by governments of many countries, including New Zealand, Australia, and Canada, while messages of congratulations were sent from world leaders all across the globe. Number 15. The Queen's COVID-19 Address 2020 During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Queen Elizabeth II made a rare televised address to the nation, offering comforting words and echoing the spirit of unity and resilience which resonated with many and helped unite the country during a time of crisis. Together, we are tackling this disease, and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it," the Queen said. I hope in the years to come, everyone will be able to take pride in how they responded to this challenge. Speaking to the nation in a pre-recorded video, the Queen also thanked the NHS and others for carrying out essential roles and catering to the needs of the public. That'd be all for this video. Do you know any other event that has united and brought the country together? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we post new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.